Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth kit. And I'm going back with one that I've done a lot, or at least a series that I've done a lot. Time to go back to Star Wars. And this is one of the newer lines from the older movie. Today I'm going to put together Slave One. Not quite sure what to expect or how difficult it's going to be. One way to find out. Let's rip this open and see what's inside. Slave One. Instructions. Metal sheets. It always takes me a minute to get these open. And in the beginning, on the first page, we have the usual little intro or pencil drawing or line drawing of the kit. An interesting little bit about insertion tabs and folds. It's a very different looking example there. A bit about the needle nose pliers being helpful. A key or a legend, if you will. The blue circles, when you see those in, in the instructions, it means to bend the tab 90 degrees. The green triangle means to twist them. And this is a little bit more information about the tabs. Down at the bottom, we have the layout of the two sheets so that you know, and they're numbered, so you know what part is what. Where to find it. I see we have a couple of pieces that are colored, and those are basically duplicate parts. One of them is numbers, the other isn't, but that makes it easy to find. And if we open this up, we have page two, the assembly flowchart, which starts Starts with part one, and then two, and then three, and just goes down the page. Follow the arrows, more or less. Page three on the back, with four. And then we go to the other sheet. And open it up for page five and six and seven and eight. I have an array of tools that I use to build these kits starting with the tweezers. They're useful for a lot of things. I've built a lot of kits just using the tweezers but it is helpful to have more things and one thing I would recommend is either the toolkit from Fascinations or a set similar to the particularly long needle nose pliers are very helpful the flat nose pliers do come in handy for bending parts evenly and these clippers are invaluable for getting parts off of the metal sheets or spruce or trim however you want to call it. I have a few other tools that I use. I have some locking Kelly clamps or pliers. These are good for holding on to small parts, good for reaching into deep areas. I have some dental hooks that I use for pushing and pulling corners and, and parts that may have been folded in too far. I have ring nose pliers which are great for shaping some of the parts. The ring nose pliers are great for curving and shaping bends and curves. And I have amassed an array of different dowel rods. I've got, I've got some step mandrels. These are all used for rounding and curving parts. I've got an inexpensive drill bit set that I sometimes use depending on the size of the part. A couple of these dowel rods have been sharpened to help with cone shaped parts. And then I have marbles and beads to help with ball shaped or round shape or cone shape. So it all come in handy depending on the shape you're trying to make. We've had a peek at the directions and we've got our tools together. Well, let's get started.
There are a lot of tabs in this kit that need to be bent over. Oftentimes, tabs have bend lines to make it easier, but many of them in this kit do not. Try to get as close as possible to the part and bend as sharp as you can when bending the tabs over. If you bend too far away from the part, you will have more trouble getting the tabs to line up with the slot. Part 3 is very small and there is little room to get the tabs into their slots. I found it helpful to bend the tab first towards the center to help line things up. The instructions say to twist the tabs that hold the gun on, but I really do not have anything thin enough and strong enough to twist the tabs in that small of a space. I managed to twist one tab a little, but then just bent them over. When attaching the assembly to part 13, the instructions have you bend over the tabs. I started off by twisting a couple of the tabs to hold them in place while I worked on the rest of the tabs and getting them into their slot. I bent the rest of the tabs over and then came back when the part was secure to untwist the first two tabs and bend them over properly.
I started off by using the needle nose pliers on part 12 to keep them from warping the part, but the space between the folds is too small. I had to finish with the flat nose pliers. Move back and forth along the part bending a little at a time to keep it from warping. With part 13, I shaped it completely by hand. With part 16, I decided to start with a dowel rod, but ended up finishing the curve by hand. Once again, I twisted the first couple of tabs to hold things while I lined up the rest of the tabs into their slots, and then came back to bend them over. I worked on getting part 18 connected to the rest of the body for some time. It was difficult to know exactly how things were supposed to bend and fit together. After much trial and error, it just sort of fell into place. I'm not completely sure what I did right, but the only thing I can suggest is to make sure the tabs and the body are bent in just a little.
The sharpened dowel rod is not the perfect tool, but it does help a great deal in making the cone shapes. There are a lot of small parts on this bottom piece, but it makes for excellent detail. I was not supposed to twist the four tabs because of limited space. I had to come back and straighten them out and bend them over. There is very little room to get to the tabs on the struts. I could only twist one of the tabs and the other I had to bend over. With the bases, I like to bend over the long sides by pressing them against the table. I had a difficult time getting part 41 secured to part 40. There are only two tabs that hold it into place and if you do not twist them tightly enough, the part flops around. I tried over and over to tighten the tabs to the point I broke one of the joints. 
I had to pick up a spare kit and keep going. What I ended up doing was pulling on the tabs as I twisted, which helped a lot. Still a little floppy, but not as much. There are three tabs that hold these two parts together. Two stick straight up, but one is parallel with the part. I missed that at first and was confused as to why it would not sit flat. It took a good 10 minutes to adjust the tab so that these fins would fit. Slave One, Boba Fett's signature ship. This build got off to a quick start. The It seemed to go fast because there were a lot of larger parts coming together. Once I got to the bottom, doing the bottom flattish part, there was a lot of detail. There was a lot of little pieces, but that's okay. It was worth it. It took quite a bit of time to go through that part and attach all the little parts and adjust them. But again, the detail it adds is well worth it. I had some trouble getting the bottom part into the top part. There were some issues with that sort of shroud, but time and patience, and I for the most part got it. Maybe not as even as I'd like, but it'll do. I'm not an expert at this. I just kind of bumble along and do the best I can. I try to share my mistakes with others to help them when they decide to do the kit, when they go to do the kit. I did have a lot of problem with right there at the end with one of the fins trying to get apart to keep from being floppy. I tried too hard, ended up broken it, breaking it. It was very difficult to hold the two pieces in place straight while twisting the tab to hold it straight. So I ended up buying a second kit just to finish this one off. Got an almost complete unbuilt kit minus one fin and a couple of little pieces. But in the end, as always, glad to have done it. It is not one of the easier kits, but it's not one of the more difficult. It was quite a bit easier than the ATST walker that I've already done. Maybe not as easy as the Falcon, though. A lot of it fairly simple, but as always, there's parts. You get in these kits, there's areas where it's tricky. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. There's more kits coming when I have the time. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.